what's going on we're back uh, today we're gonna go over something this is gonna be like part one you'll see the entire thing in this video of how everything plays out but this is the first part before I've even sent these off to be auctioned I am going to be sending off the non hollow base set first edition stuff which is in the boxes we've gone over that stuff before all the eights and everything like that but then I'm also gonna be sending off some very special cards and uh, the the point of doing this is because once we sell these off we will then reinvest it and you'll kind of see how I do that on the channel and then we'll kind of uh, track that over time and see how that investment does because I think we'll be able to reinvest it most likely into some sealed product that we can get at the low right now and then just keep an eye on that and then we'll be able to forecast ourselves to you know potentially double our money at a more faster rate than we would with vintage uh, slabs so so first one that we're going to go over here is the the first edition jolteon which we did see in a previous video this got a near mint eight this one's not super expensive but i kind of want to just get rid of the eight and i have just all nines and just a handful of tens now on display no more eights so and then we're also going to do the the flareon the gem mint 10 flareon first edition from jungle as well and then we also have our first edition mewtwo hollow this was an ear mint eight and then the last but not least this is by far <laughs> the grail card in my collection now lucky for me i'm not a huge blastoise guy you know he's probably third favorite for me if it was Venusaur or Charizard, I've had I'd, I would have a lot harder time sending this off for auction. But being Blastoise, I think it's amazing. But it's also the most valuable thing, and I think I can reinvest that, and maybe in the future we buy it again. So that is going to be the first part. My guess for how much we're going to get for everything on auction after all the fees and everything like that, I'm guessing. We're looking at somewhere near $8,000. Um, this card alone is probably going to be close to about half of that, about $4,000. This one's going to be close to, the Mewtwo is going to be close to eight, nine, dollars maybe $1,000. The Flareon should be close to maybe $1,200 to $1,300. And then the Jolteon's like $150. And then the rest of everything else, we're hoping to receive back somewhere around $2,200 give or take 10 5 10 percent on that but yeah somewhere around that and we will see how we do in the following part of this video i'm very excited all right now we're on to part two of this video it's been about a month or so since i shot that first video before we even mailed out the uh graded cards that we wanted to auction off and we have already started our investment portion of it into some of the sealed product I brought out a nice sampling here, but first I wanted to go over the numbers. I'll flash up the uh, eBay sales as well from how we did <clears throat> from our auction. So first off, uh, we had 88 total cards that we sent off to auction. And most of them, if not all of them, were first edition. The majority of it was the first edition non holo stuff, the commons, uncommons, and a few of the uh, non holo rares from first edition base set. My goal on those alone was somewhere to be around what I think like 2000 or 2200 bucks or something like that. Um, I don't, let's see here, I got some math here. So I think in total they sold for like 2740. So that was the total that they sold for. And then you got to subtract the actual fees. And then each car that doesn't get a hundred bucks, there's also an additional five dollar fee from the consignment company that I used. Um, if you guys are interested in that, in consigning your own graded cards, I'll put a link to ZNG Emporium, that's who I used, and then their logo I'll put up as well here in the video. But <clears throat> anything under $100, you get 86% of the sale price, plus they take an additional $5 fee. So that, you know, really you want to try to send stuff that's going to get over 100 but I had so many of these, I just wanted to cash out on that, that portion of my investment. So I did that, and then I threw in, like I said, the Blastoise, the Flareon, the Mewtwo, and Jolteon, which you saw in the beginning of this video, 
and our thoughts on that, I thought the Blastoise was gonna get around 4,000. We ended up auctioning that one off for about $3,500. You'll see the auction sale up here. Um, and then you get 92% of that and no additional fee because it got over $1,000. So we came away pretty good on that one. And then the Flareon, the Gem Mint 10 Flareon, I thought was only gonna get like 12 to 1400. It ended up selling at auction for $1,819, which you see right here. Um, that is a, a much higher than I thought, so that kind of evens out the Blastoise going under what I thought. So those together kind of evened out. The Mewtwo got exactly what I thought. It got $900 on the dot. And then Jolteon, I thought it was gonna get like 150. It got 140. It was just a near mint eight on that one. So in total, everything sold for $9,140 after you calculate in the uh, fees and, and then the percentage wise, we ended up getting a payout of approximately $7,826. I've already received, I think it's over 7,700. There's a couple cards that didn't get paid for, so they're actually re-auctioning now. So hopefully those will do about the same and then I'll get the, the remainder of this payout. Um, but like I said, it was only maybe 100 or 200 bucks. Um, additional to what I've already received. So with that money, what were my thoughts on reinvesting it into sealed product? Well, everyone knows booster boxes are like the number one investment. Uh, I did kind of miss the boat on the Sword and Shields a little bit late in my decision to auction off some of these cards. So I didn't have the actual liquid funding to reinvest you know, in Sword and Shield. Plus it was already at MSRP, which was 143. And there's always other plays that you can make uh, further down the road. There's always new plays to be made. But I did pick up a couple Sword and Shield booster boxes while they were still available. So we do have our Lost Origin. We've got the Brilliant Stars. We've got some Vivid Voltage. We got Fusion Strike. And then we've got Silver Tempest as well. And I believe Silver Tempest is still available. And then we also picked up some Japanese 151, which you've been seeing me open in a couple. I got a couple with uh, the shrink wrap and a couple without the shrink wrap. So these are the ones with the shrink wrap. Prices on these are still dropping. I think they just announced another allocation of reprints in Japan for like this month and next month. So I think the prices will continue to fall, uh, you know, a little bit until this reprints over. And then I, like I mentioned in a previous video, I do think these boxes will settle in the near future somewhere around, uh, you know, a hundred bucks or something like that for at least a sealed version. And it's just a really cool set. It's got the Master Ball, it's got the God Packs, it's all Kanto Pokemon. So you, you just can't go wrong. And then in that same vein, we do have the English 151. This is a sealed booster bundle case. You cannot pick these up at store. So I did have to buy this online. I use like a, a Facebook group in order to find, to find this. This has 10 of the booster bundles in there. So I do have the sealed case and I've been picking up just the single booster bundles as well. Um, I'm trying to do a long-term hold on those. <clears throat> the thought was one, everyone loves this set. So I think it's gonna do great in the future in like a year, two years after the reprint window finally closes. You might even see a price drop on these if they do reprint the bundles, which I think they probably will. Um, but I'm willing to hold on to this for, you know, two, three, four years, whatever, whatever it takes till I double my initial investment here. Um, so I think that's a really good pickup. And then my other thought on the booster bundles, the booster boxes, almost every product that I invested in, besides a couple of these Charizard UPCs, every product my thought was that I want to have something that's one, easy to store, so smaller, easy to ship, lighter, smaller, like the booster bundles, like the booster boxes. Uh, I got a lot of these tins as well. These are the Hisuian tins. I think I picked up like 10 of these. And the reason I got these is because they have all sword and shield and they definitely have, I think, two evolving skies in here as well. So that's gonna be a nice long-term hold. But the thing about it is they're metal. They're not like a cardboard box that could be dented. So I don't have to worry so much about, you know, damaging this sealed product if I wanna store them in tubs or something like that. And then when I go to sell it, they're pretty easy to ship, they're pretty easy to pack up, and I think that the uh, the cost of shipping is gonna be a lot less than if you you know went heavy in on these Charizard UPCs, or even you know more so like the uh, Celebration or the uh, 151 UPCs, those boxes are huge. So trying to resell those and then ship them, you're gonna pay an arm and a leg for shipping, plus you're gonna pay you know potential if they get damaged or something like that. So I went with a lot of the metal stuff 
And then also we have the Crown Zenith. I really like Crown Zenith, so I got a bunch of these tins, the Galarian Bird tins. Some of the best um, promo cards, in my opinion, are also in these tins. So you get the Zapdos here, you get the Articuno here, and then you got the Moltres here. So I think I picked up somewhere around 18 of these so far, and there's three per the, the set, right? So I picked up three total sets of the Glaring Bird tins. We got the, the Hisuian tins, or whatever they call these, Divergent Power tins, that's what they're called. And then we did get some good deals on ETBs. So I do have some Lost Origin ETBs. I got some Crown Zenith ETBs most of which I got under retail, under market value right now. And I don't think it's gonna to be too much longer before Lost Origin and Crown Zenith at least get back to MSRP. And I paid, I think for the Lost Origin, I paid like 35 bucks and Crown Zenith I paid between 35 and $40. So I think that is a good pickup as well. You know, I'm still a casual investor, even though I probably have now reinvested a couple thousand dollars into the sealed product. Um, I don't think this is by any means a huge collection here. I'm not trying to be a millionaire, but I do want to just kind of keep tracking it. And then as things go up, you know, make more plays here and there and then uh, reinvest that money into other things. And, you know, in the future, as the thing just keeps growing and growing, I think I can easily buy back some of those cards that maybe I did really want to keep, such as the first edition uh, Flareon and things of that nature. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far. Very happy with how the auctions went. You know, I, I expected to get somewhere around $8,000. That's exactly how we did. We got $7,800. That was the payout then, and not just the auction price. We got paid out $7,800. So just barely under what I thought was going to be. And that the thing with the auction is you're sending all cards off to be auctioned at the same exact time in the same week. And then you're just hoping that the, the right eyeballs see the right product that they want. And then you're also going up against all the other big time hitters that are being auctioned off that week. So I think in my my week that I sold the Blastoise here, that was like the third or fourth highest sold, uh, highest sold card. There was some first edition, I think it was a Crystal Lugia, as well as a Shining Charizard first edition. So those ones did get a lot higher. And then I think maybe one other like unique Japanese promo card or something like that. But yeah, that is the investment portfolio so far. Like I said, this is just a, a small sample of everything that I have um, already already gotten into it. And then I'm also looking for other avenues. I do have some capital left over from that sale to reinvest. I'm looking for probably maybe go more to the Scarlet and Violet era, see how things shape up and you can get still really good deals on cases of booster boxes. So hope you guys enjoyed this content. We do still have the giveaway going on for the first edition, or first edition, for the Illustration Rare English Charmander PSA 9. You need to go back to the video on June 1st, leave a like and a comment on that video and be a subscriber and that'll get you entered in to win that card. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I would also appreciate leaving a like on this. It does go a long way to helping out, you know, build the channel here as we go slow and steady. We are past 200 at this point, you know, I think, a good goal for this year might be like 500 subscribers. That'd be kind of cool. But otherwise, you know, I just enjoy making the content and sharing it with uh, like-minded individuals. So hope you guys enjoyed the comment. Let me know what you guys, or content, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And uh, we can kind of discuss a little bit back and forth if you want. So thanks again, guys. Take it easy.